Have you ever looked back onto old medical practices that were performed and thought, are these people crazy? Well, if you haven't, you need to watch this video. This video will share some of the craziest, in my opinion, medical practices that were performed on human beings back in the day. Although it wasn't that long ago that some of these were performed. Before we get started, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. But other than that, let's get into today's video of these old school medical practices that used to be done. All right, so here we go. I will be pausing throughout this video to give you some more background on each one of these medical practices. The most shocking old time medical practices. Heroin cough syrup. The pharmaceutical company Bayer coined the name heroin in 1898 and marketed the drug as a non-addictive cough medicine, among other uses. Can we just stop there? They claimed it as non-addictive. Let's keep going. Heroin was sold in a variety of forms, mixed in cough syrup, made into tablets, mixed as an elixir, and put into water-soluble heroin salts. At the end of the first year, it was popularly sold in over 23 countries, with Bayer producing around one ton of heroin in that year. So let me give you a quick history fun fact. So in the 1800s, the cure for alcoholism was to give your patient opium. In about 1810, morphine was developed from opium and marketed as a painkiller. It was the newfound wonder drug giving these patients a wonderful euphoric effect. And then in about 1850, morphine was introduced to America and it was being used widely by many doctors. Fast forward a little bit, the Civil War comes. And what pain medication are we going to give these Confederates and Northerner Yankees? Morphine to help with their injuries. Seems okay, right? No, this created tons of soldiers who then were addicted to morphine. So what was the cure for morphine addiction? Heroin. In 1874, a German scientist or doctor created heroin and this was the new found non-addictive and safe drug to cure a morphine addiction. And this is where the heroin epidemic started. But let's continue, let's go on to the next shocking medical practice that used to be done, mercury. Mercury. Mercury was once used as a common elixir and topical medicine. You keep hearing this word elixir and I just wanna explain what that means real quick. An elixir is a combination medication used to temporarily relieve symptoms caused by the common cold, flu, allergies, or other breathing illnesses like sinusitis or bronchitis. While some accounts claimed it was successful in fighting infection, patients often died from organ damage caused by mercury poisoning. The whirling chair. Oh, you guys like a this chair one. modified with a spring and lever system used to spin patients until they passed out. The belief was that all the spinning would cure conditions such as schizophrenia and other mental illnesses by shuffling the contents of the brain. That is so wrong. The whirling chair was introduced in 1804 and we've been trying to figure out schizophrenia since and we still don't have a cure here 218 years later. Radium. During the early 1900s, radioactive water flew off the shelves. It was considered in the medical community to cure mental illness and even prevent aging because this of its is ability wild. to stimulate cell activity. The U.S. Surgeon General at the time considered it a legitimate treatment for diarrhea and malaria. Radium began appearing in not only water, but also in chocolates, contraceptives, toothpaste, That's and That's insane. I want to know how poisonous is radium? Well, here's what I found. Exposure to high levels of radium over a long period of time may result in harmful effects like anemia, cataracts, fractured teeth, cancer, especially bone cancer, it says, and death. Some of the effects may take years to develop and are mostly due to gamma radiation. Guys, these people trusted in the doctors back then to not harm them. And look, it took years for this 
to have side effects. Makes me wonder what's going on in today's world that might have side effects way down the line or new procedures that are being done that may have side effects way down the line. Let's keep going. Corpse medicine. For a couple of centuries, it was considered the norm to use ground up skull to treat migraines this is or insane, rubbing human guys. fat on the spot of the muscle for aches. Human organs, fat, bones, blood, and mummified remains were considered magical and the cannibalistic remedies no. were used up mm -mm. until the 18th century. The general idea behind this practice was that the patient receiving the treatment would actually benefit from the soul and spirit of the donor. Well, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Frontal lobotomy. Walter Freeman developed the ice pick lobotomy in 1945 and performed between 3,000. Did you hear that? 1945. That's not Later, that long he was ago, guys. A moral 1945. And lobotomy Here one of go. the most barbaric mistakes of modern medicine. Lobotomy consists of cutting or scraping away most of the connections to and from the prefrontal cortex, the anterior part of the frontal lobes of the brain. This is While a small wild. percentage of people supposedly got better, for most patients, lobotomy had negative effects on their personality and ability to function on their own. Did you see that picture of that woman? That's a big difference. So let me go into this one a little bit because I wanted to know how many lobotomies were done in America and when the last one was done here in America. So this is what I found. This was used to cure mental health disorders. And this was only done 77 years ago, guys. 77. My grandparents are older than 77. So they were alive when this was being done. So this is what I found in an article about lobotomies. The use of lobotomy in the United States was resisted and criticized heavily by American neurosurgeons. Okay, you need to listen to this right here. This is like the most important part of this video. Um, and I won't go into further detail, but just listen to what this article says. Let's quote right here. However, here it is. Because Freeman, the one who created lobotomies, managed to promote the success of the surgery through media, okay, through media, lobotomies became touted as a miracle procedure. Neurosurgeons say no, media says yes. And why do people want it? Because media says yes. These are great things happening. Neurosurgeons, Media, neurosurgeons, media, who are you gonna listen to? Okay, so through the media, lobotomies became touted as a miracle procedure, capturing the attention of the public and leading to an overwhelming demand for the operation. Okay, there's a link to this in the description below. And I also found out that in 1967, that was the last recorded lobotomy done here in America. Bloodletting. In the Middle Ages, blood, and excess blood in particular, was often seen as the cause of multiple ailments. Therefore, doctors would remove large quantities of blood from a person's And you'll see this in like in old school videos as well, or old school movies. The two ways of doing this were by leeching or simply cutting a vein. Okay, pause. Leeching. Okay, right? Let the blood out. Well, did you know leeching is still a thing? If you didn't, it actually is. Leeching is still a thing that is done in modern medicine. And it's actually FDA approved. Leeching and maggot therapy, still a thing. Check the description for a link to an article. It helps with wound care, actually. All right, we got three more to go. Number eight. Arsenic. Arsenic may be a well-known poison, but for centuries it was used as a medicine. Arsenic was a key ingredient in many medicines used to treat arthritis. It was also a supposed cure for malaria and syphilis, used from the late 18th century all the way until the 1950s. To the 1950s? Trepanning. The 1950s? Trepanning involved burrowing a small hole into the skull to expose the outer membrane of the brain. It was believed to alleviate pressure and treat health problems localized within the head. Okay, they're on to something it on this one It was thought to though. cure epilepsy, migraines, and mental disorders, and was a common fix for physical problems like skull fractures. 
such exposure of the brain to airborne germs would often be fatal. Okay, let's pause there because they're on to something here. Trip, tripping, trepanning, tree panning, tree panning. We're gonna go with tree panning. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. So I can totally understand why they do this. We kind of do something like this nowadays, and it's called burr holes, where you actually drill a hole into the patient's skull, sometimes multiple holes. So I can get on board with their thought behind this one. Lobotomies, no. But this one, yes. Okay, last one, here we go. Number 10, shocking old time medical practices. This one's Think funny. Therapy. In the Middle Ages, the Black Death was thought to be caused by deadly vapors. Doctors were convinced that the key to fighting the disease was the use of therapeutic stink. Therapeutic stink, guys. They urged people to keep goats in the home and to store flatulence in jars. Each time the deadly pestilence appeared in the neighborhood, people were to open the jars and take a whiff. They were collecting goat farts. Goat farts and smelling them. What is that gonna do? What, who thought of this as in, let me hold a jar up to a goat's behind, have them fart, this is what I'm understanding they're saying, have them fart in it, pass flatulence, and put that seal on and the black death is coming, let me smell the goat fart. That's so weird. But although I can understand kind of where they're coming from with this one, because we do use aromatherapy in medicine, especially for cancer patients, with any kind of patient who has nausea, if you smell lavender, that will help get rid of your nausea. So I do understand it, although I don't understand why a goat fart. What are some crazy medical practices that you have heard of from way back in the day or even recently? Comment that down below. I would love to hear from you. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. But other than that, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.